before we bring our inspector in, should we do something? Let's do rate the rates. This is my micro clap because that's all we can do about rates right now. <laughs> Little micro clap. <laughs> um, rating the rates. Welcome to rate the rates. This fine, beautiful May edition of rate the rates. Um, it's no surprise. I, I don't think I'm going to tell any any secrets here, but rates have gone up. <gasps> and uh, dun dun dun. But uh, long story short, there's there's some silver lining coming, and I, I just wanted to uh, think about where we've been. We, we've talked about this a little bit when we first jumped into 2022. Rates were just right around three yeah. percent. Now they're just right around six percent, and uh, so. Okay, we do some really quick math. The cost of mortgages has doubled. It's completely doubled. Right? It's doubled. Yeah. So it's it's definitely working itself out in the market right now. People are making decisions on whether or not we should sell, whether or not now is a good time with rates being so high. Should we buy that house or what have you? Um, the other interesting thing that we've been talking about is now that people are locked in at 2.75 or 3%, they're less likely to sell their house. They're Much like, less likely. wait, I'm going to, I'm going to sell this house when I'm, when my cost of funds is 3% so I can go buy that next house at 6%. Well, and they're no, not only, I more don't know about that. <laughs> less likely to sell it when they move, they're less likely to sell it altogether because they're holding on to them for rental properties. Yes. Yes. You know? So now here's the silver lining and I'm loving this. You guys ready for this? Recession is great for rates. Yeah. Okay. Recession is great for rates. If you go back and look at every single recessionary time that we've had since the seventies to current rates tick up, they, they peak out and then they come back down throughout the recession and after the recession. So though it's pretty sticky right now and it's hurting because just five short months ago, we had 3% rates, things will get better. But so just hang in there. And I don't know about you, but what I'm seeing with my clients and with houses that are being purchased for my clients is a lot of arms. I'm not impressive here. I'm not, I'm, no. <laughs> uh, I spin, I'm a cycle guy, cycle bar, love you guys. But, um, so my, my you want to see my quads and thighs? Beefy. We're, we're but anyway, good. um, we're good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that's a very good point. <laughs> um, the adjustable rate mortgages have actually, the spread between, we didn't talk about adjustable rate mortgages from the mortgage meltdown to current market, right? right? It, it just didn't make sense. You could get a better interest rate on a 30 year fixed than you could on a five, seven or 10 year adjustable rate mortgage. Yeah. So nobody looked at them. Now you're definitely seeing the spread, the spread on the Freddie Mac uh, mortgage survey. The spread is now 1.3% yep. in interest rate between a 30 year fixed and a five year arm. That's pretty substantial, especially with folks that are looking to get into that house for a short term. Um, it's a great tool to go out and acquire a house at a lesser monthly payment. I'm seeing a lot of five, five year arms, seven year arms. Yep. And frankly, most people don't stay in the house longer than seven years. So it yep. can very much be a good option for people jumping into the market right now. Absolutely. But know your options after that adjustable rate period is up. It's, it could go up, yep. it could go down. It's going to adjust. So. Hence adjustable. Oh, so it's not just a clever name. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's rate the rates. Um, you know, I, I think we're getting very close to the peak. And um, I think once we get into a full on recession, we're going to start seeing those rates come back down. Yeah. So yeah. there you have it. Um, and that's affecting the market in general. So just the what the market's doing right now, we have seen a massive shift. As soon as the rates started jumping up, mm -hmm. we started seeing less and less multiple offers. Now we see some houses sitting on the market for one, two, three, four weeks. Um, we're seeing some multiple offers, but we're not seeing the 300,000 over asking like we were for a while. And it's very interesting to see because there's like a, a line in the sand. And if you listed after that, mm. you missed the market. Um, in addition, it's made a little bit more challenging by the time of year because a lot of people list their house in the spring. That's what people yep. traditionally have done. So the point that the rates started going up was exactly the point that more inventory started coming on the market. Yeah. So it's slowed the market. Now I wanna be very clear. 
It is not a buyer's market in all means. It is still completely a seller's market. Uh, it's just the seller cannot demand as much as they were a few months ago. And on top of that, the buyer has a little bit more power, meaning they have the ability sometimes to do an inspection, to keep in their finance contingency, not give up their earnest money, things like that. So. I took a note. I got to bring the buyer seller meter. I have a buyer seller meter. Ooh. So we're, we'll adjust the buyer seller meter every episode going That's forward. So stay tuned for next month. June's going to kick butt. <laughs> yeah. But it is very much going towards the it's still seller. It's just not all the way seller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.